Today I want to walk you through the stupidly simple fitness plan that I use to lose 45 pounds in just four months. The same plan that's helped hundreds of my clients just like these guys to get absolutely crazy results. Despite what you might have heard, you do not need to go to the gym every single day. You absolutely don't need to work out for two hours at a time and you certainly do not need to do any boring cardio. But look, Let's be real. The fitness plan that I would give a guy, say, in his 20s, is going to look pretty different to the one that I would give you. Because I know that you've got less time, different priorities, and lower energy levels. And I know that because I'm in the exact same position. As I've gotten older myself and I've worked with more guys in their late 30s, their 40s, and even their 50s, my approach to fitness has completely changed. Let's face it, for most of us mere mortals, as soon as we turn 30, our body really starts to work against us. Your metabolism starts to slow down, you've got less energy, and you just put fat on way easier. As partners, kids, and mortgages come into the equation, suddenly the idea of getting to sub 10% body fat doesn't seem quite as important as it used to. To get the best results and to maximize fat loss, we need something simple, something efficient, and most importantly, something effective. So what I wanna give you in this video is four ways that you can use to transform your workouts for better results and faster results today. First and foremost, we need to focus on what we call compound movements. Now, if you don't know what those are, do not worry, I'm gonna explain that in a second. But these were a game changer for me. Because when I first started going to the gym, like a lot of guys, my workouts consisted of bicep curls and sit-ups. I just didn't know any better back then, and I'm sure you can relate. Quite honestly, I just copied the Rocky cutscenes because in my head, if it worked for Sly, it was gonna work for me, right? Wrong. Exercises like bicep curls and sit-ups are what we call isolation exercises. They use individual muscles and normally the smaller ones. Now listen, I completely get it. It makes logical sense that if you wanna see your abs to do ab workouts, but it doesn't work that way and you're actually not gonna make much progress at all if you do that. Instead, what you wanna do is prioritize the multi-joint exercises that use the biggest muscles in your body. And these are the ones that we call compound movements. So things like squats, deadlifts, hip thrusts, lunges, push-ups, pull-ups, dips, bent over row, chest press. I could go on, but hopefully you get the idea. These exercises use the biggest muscles, and as a result, they get the best results. And the coolest part is they're also going to help you to burn the most calories, and that means you're going to lose fat faster. That's because the bigger the muscle, the harder your body has to work. The harder your lungs have to work to breathe in the oxygen. The harder that your heart has to work to pump that oxygen in the blood to the muscle and the harder the muscle has to work to create a big enough contraction for you to be able to lift the weight. So the harder that all of these processes within your body have to work, the more calories that you burn. So it's a real win-win. Number two is that you wanna work smarter and not harder. I'd say most junior coaches and fitness influencers make this mistake. They work really hard, but they don't work smart. They spend three hours in the gym every single day and they assume that everybody else has the same amount of time to do so. But not only are they wasting their own time, they're wasting yours too. You certainly don't need to be working out for two or three hours every day and you definitely don't need to be doing 10 exercises every single workout. So this is what I would recommend that you do instead. Three well-structured 45 minute full body workouts each week. That really is all that you need. Pick four to six exercises focusing on the compound movements that we spoke about earlier and use lighter weight than you normally would. And then rather than doing the usual three sets of 10 that you see everybody else in the gym doing and all those people who get like no results, do four sets of 15 to 20 reps and keep the rest periods in between your sets nice and short. So we're talking 45 to 60 seconds max. Because think about it this way, if you do three sets of 10, that's 30 reps, right? Whereas if you do four sets of 20, that's 80 reps. So if you do it that way, you're doing more than twice. In fact, it's nearly three times the volume. But this is where it gets even better. Because you're only resting 45 to 60 seconds in between your sets, unlike everybody else who's resting two to three minutes, you're getting your workout done in less time. So you're doing nearly three times the volume in less time. So it's efficient and it sure as hell is effective. And what's also cool is because you're moving around the gym less, because we've got less exercise variety, remember we're only picking four to six exercises rather than 10 exercises every single workout, you're spending less time in between exercises. So less time waiting for equipment, less time unloading a loaded weight, and you're spending more time working. We're having shorter rest periods. We are working in higher rep ranges and we have 
less exercise variety. All three of those things combined are gonna make your workouts far more efficient and far more effective. So now you can get in and out of the gym in less time without worrying about compromising on the effectiveness on the workout. Okay, let's move on and talk about number three, which is gonna be progressive overload. So without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest mistake that I see most guys make in the gym is that they are going in time after time and doing the same thing over and over again and getting frustrated and scratching their heads why they're not making any progress. Now, if that sounds like you, don't worry. Like I say, it's very common, but let me explain a super straightforward and simple solution for you. Have you ever heard the story of Milo and the bull? Full disclosure, I have absolutely no idea if this is a true story or just an ancient Greek myth. But either way, it's pretty cool and it's a very good analogy for what I want to talk about. So basically, this dude called Milo had a baby bull, a calf. I think that's what they're called. Anyway, for some reason, he decided to carry it up a hill every single day. Maybe he was mental, I don't know. Anyway, as the calf grew, Milo continued to carry it every day up that hill. So as the calf grew gradually, so did Milo's strength. And by the time it was a fully grown bull, Milo had the strength to carry it on his shoulders. So you see, as the weight slowly increased over time, his body had no choice but to adapt. And that is how you get stronger and fitter. Except the good news for you is that you don't need to carry a bull up a hill because these days we have gym memberships. But what I've just described is called progressive overload. When you lift weights, your body gets used to the effort. So to keep building strength and muscle over time, you need to do one of three things. You need to either do more reps, add an extra set or lift heavier weight. And it really is that simple. The challenge with progressive overload is the consistency. Last but not least, number four, do the exact opposite to everybody else. Now that might sound a little bit strange, but hear me out, 95% of people in your gym don't have a clue what they're doing. And that's for three reasons. Number one, they are not following a program. Number two, they don't know how to lift with great form. And number three, they are almost certainly not training hard enough. They're doing three sets of 10. They're taking three to four minutes in between their sets. They're doing 10 exercises every single workout, and they're spending half the time in the gym on their phone. My clients aren't doing average programs and because of that, they're not getting average results. You wanna make sure that you are in control of the weight and not the other way around. You don't wanna be lifting weights that you know are too heavy for you. Not only are you gonna end up looking pretty damn stupid, but you're also gonna end up getting hurt. So many people are lifting weight that they cannot control. And if they can't control the weight, the weight will control them. And if the weight is controlling them, they are not putting any mechanical tension on the muscle that they are trying to work. If they're not putting mechanical tension on the muscle that they're trying to work, how the heck do you expect that muscle to grow? All you're doing instead is putting pressure on your joints. And if you do that, you're far more likely to get injured. And trust me, that hot girl over there that you're trying to impress, she doesn't care. Leave the ego at the door and for the love of God, put your phone away. Let me tell you a true story that I am genuinely still a little bit mad about. So the other day I walked into the gym and a guy was using the machine that I wanted to start my workout on. No big deal, it's not my gym. He's perfectly within his rights to be on that machine. Although I say using, he was sat doe-eyed just staring at his phone. But like I say, no big deal. I'll go and start on the second exercise in my workout. So anyway, I've done four sets and I look over and shock horror, he is still on the machine. Not only was he still on the machine, he was still staring at his phone. So I'm thinking, don't get too worked up. It's not a big deal. Enjoy your workout. Go and do the third exercise in your plan. So I do that. I do another four sets. Guess what? Anyway, long story short, I ended up doing 12 sets on three pieces of equipment before this guy finally got up and walked off. But the whole point of me telling you this story is that in the time that I did 12 sets, he did three. Extrapolate that out. I'm doing four times the volume that he is in the same amount of time. I mean, listen, it doesn't take a genius to figure out who is gonna make more progress. So that's how we're gonna improve your strength and your fitness. But to get you losing fat faster, we want you burning more calories every day. But like I said at the beginning of this video, you do not need to be working out for two hours every single day of the week. In fact, think about what that would look like if you actually did it. Two hours, 
seven days a week, that would be 14 hours a week. You would still only be spending 8% of your time in the gym. So the point I'm getting at is that the lifestyle that you live outside of the gym is far more important. But this is a former client of mine called Paul. Now, Paul is in his early 40s. He has two kids. He lives in the UK and he has a very busy job. But here's what's so cool. Despite all of those limiting factors, in just three months on my coaching program, he was able to lose 30 pounds. And a huge part of that was because of his step count. Yes, he was in a calorie deficit. And yes, he was working out two to three times a week from home. But what really moved the needle for Paul, what helped him to lose so much weight in such a short space of time was his commitment to his walking. Now, Paul is a keen golfer and he figured out quite early on that he was able to combine his love for the sport with his fitness goals. So he would regularly hit like 18,000 steps a day by getting out onto the course after work and at weekends. But here's the thing, you do not need to be doing 18,000 steps a day. And you certainly do not need to love golf. You don't even need to like golf. I don't like golf. Now, Paul is obviously an outlier, but He's a great example of what an amazing difference your step count can make. Walking is such an underrated exercise. I mean, if you can even call it an exercise. And it's a high leverage activity because of all the amazing benefits that you get from doing it. Here's the problem. The average Brit and American only does about three and a half thousand steps a day. But honestly, I just think that's because most people don't know that it's a thing, that if they focus on it and they really pay attention to it, it can have such a profound difference. And if you walk at a brisk pace, you can do a thousand steps in just every eight minutes. That means if you walk for about an hour a day, 64 minutes to be precise, you'll get 8,000 steps. Now, not only is that more than double the average, but it's also going to help you to burn an additional three to 400 calories every day. But guys, it gets better because walking doesn't just help with weight loss. In fact, I think my favorite thing about walking is the profound, powerful, positive effect that it can have on your mindset. And that's because walking activates your parasympathetic nervous system. That's the part of your nervous system which is linked with rest, relaxation and recovery. Have you ever wondered why you feel less stressed and even more creative when you get outside and go for a walk? That's your parasympathetic nervous system kicking in. Because you see, changing your environment, getting outside, getting some fresh air and heck, maybe even some sunlight. You can't see it on the outside but it's doing wonders for you on the inside. Use it as an opportunity to listen to an audiobook or a podcast, stick a playlist on, phone a friend, phone your mom, or switch all of your meetings from Zoom meetings to walking meetings. Because listen, it's been four years. And when I say this, I think I speak on behalf of millions, if not many billions of people. Everybody is sick of Zoom. And no one wants to be discussing the weather or talking about what you did last weekend. And here's the thing, not all of your walking has to be purposeful. You'll do about 2,000 steps a day just existing. Whether it's commuting to work, walking around the house, playing with the kids, or doing the grocery shop. So really, if you think about it, all you consciously need to focus on is 6,000 steps a day. That's a 45 minute walk at the start of the day to wake you up and have with a coffee, or a 45 minute walk at the end of the day to de-stress you and to wind you down before bed. Now, if you have an iPhone, your health app is already tracking how many steps you do. If you don't have an iPhone, I mean, you've got bigger problems, but I'm sure you can just go on the Google Play Store or whatever it's called and download a free pedometer app, a free step counter. There you have it. The stupidly simple fitness plan that is getting guys over 35 absolutely crazy results. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would mean the world to me if you could like it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. There's a couple of links in the description underneath this video that you may or may not want to check out. The first one is to my completely free calorie calculator, which allows you to plug in your age, your weight, your height, your sex, and your activity level. And I will give you completely free personalized calorie and protein targets. The second link is if you want to apply to my coaching program. I get a completely customized workout plan that is built just for you. Anyway, I'll leave it here. As I said, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you soon.